Question number one, which of the following can be said about combi combinatorial innovation? Underline the word combinatorial. Means what? You can make out combination related. You all know the word combination. From that they have taken this. And what is the first option here? People with entrepreneurial spirit and complementary skills come together to create innovative products. That, does it talk about combination? Yes or no? I have started, are you listening? So does it talk about combination or it doesn't talk about any combination? It does talk about combination, hold that one. It is an easy process requiring little investment and success is guaranteed. That doesn't talk about combination. It is a system of management technique to provide feedback to startups and help, the, help these run efficiently. This is also not related to the combination. And what is the next one? It is a process of identifying needs and using existing means to innovatively address these. Perhaps this seems right, hold that one. It helps nurture startups, underline the word nurture. Nurture in this context means what? Support, please write the meaning. Support startups by identifying appropriate accelerators for entrepreneurs. <clears throat> because it talks about the combination, the first option says what? People with entrepreneurial spirit and complementary skills come together to create innovative products. This talks about the combination. Based on that, what is the answer? The first option is the answer. Question number two, what is the author's view of the future startups? He is wary of startups as these are experimental and not enduring organizations. The writer talks about the pros and cons of the startups, but he doesn't take a negative stand. Please underline the word wary. Wary means what? Cautious. Write the meaning cautious. Hold that one. Uh, wary of startups as these are experimental and not enduring. That is not correct. So he is reconciled. Underline the word reconcile. That's a very good word. Write the meaning. Reconcile means to accept your situation, usually negative, and move on. Accept a negative situation and move on. Someone is in a bad situation. There are two ways of responding. One, they can protest or they can get depressed and take a negative dimension, go towards a negative dimension. What is the other one? They accept. Life is like this. We can't change it. Let us accept. They move on. Then we use the expression reconciled to the fate. Write the combination word fate, F-A-T-E. He is reconciled to, to startups being the way of the future and to the changes that will occur. So the writer talks about the startups and he says pros and cons are there and he accepts definitely. And here the clue for you the second, in the second option, reconciled. The author is reconciled to startups. That is the answer. We'll see, uh, see the other options. What is the third option? He feels that startups are too dependent on feedback and hence doomed to fail. Underline the word doomed. Doomed here means destined. Destined to fail. They will end up in failure. You know the word destined, destination. You know the word destination. So destined to fail means determined to fail. That is not the right answer. He is of the opinion that startups are detrimental. Underline the word detrimental. Detrimental means what? Harmful, dangerous. Please write detrimental. First you write the word dangerous. Then you write the word harmful. Detrimental to customers' personal well-being. Not correct. Infringement. Underline the word infringement. Infringe means what? To occupy. First you write the expression to occupy. Second you write to step on. To step on. 
Third, you write encroach. Infringement of others' intellectual property rights. I mean, stepping on others' intellectual property rights will be a huge issue. Geopardizing, that's a very good word. Underline the word geopardizing. Write the word geopardy, P-A-R-D-Y. It means, uh, what is it? Endanger, exactly. Please write the meaning. Endanger. Also write the word threaten. Geopardize means threaten. Threaten means endanger. Both mean the same. But here, what is the answer? The second option is the answer. Please make a note. He is reconciled to startups. That is the answer. Shall I move on to the next one? <coughs> According to the passage, which of the following is an outcome of current environment regarding startups? Outcome of current environment. Please underline. The first one, somewhere in the passage, he talks about uh, new rules are being uh, framed. What is the first option here? Conventions regarding operation of startups are being devised. That has been mentioned in the passage. Hold that one. What is the second option? Startups are growing too slowly. That is not correct. It goes contrary to what the passage says. Mark it wrong. Startups are increasingly failing. That is also not correct. Fierce competition among startups has resulted in a drop in prices and quality of digital services. This is also not correct. It has resulted in the collapse of political regimes in many countries. Not relevant here. So what is the answer? The first option is the answer. Conventions regarding operation of startups are being devised. Please write the, underline the word regime. You got some time back. Uh, authoritarian government or the tenure of a government of a particular group. Collapse, you all know the word. Shall I move on to the next one? What does the author want to convey through the phrase, software is eating the world? The passage starts with sponges. It's not sponge, sponge. And in the past, sponges, they were spread throughout the planet Earth. Later stage, other species started occupying. Finally, today, today they are not the major, but one of the species. There he uses this one uh, in while comparing. He says, software is eating the world. That means what? Earlier sponges, they occupied the entire planet. Now, software is doing the same thing. That is the meaning of this particular expression. Now, we'll see. Just as evolution wiped out lower species, sponges are lower species. Technology will wipe out human beings. Is it possible? Can it wipe out human beings? That will never happen. Mark it wrong. The focus on technology is too much and will create tremendous job losses. Today, it is happening. You go to the US, a lot of Americans are worried. I was going through some article yesterday. It seems many Americans are worried today. What is the reason? According to one particular survey, by 2030 or 40, about 25% Americans are going to lose jobs, courtesy artificial intelligence or machine learning. So technology is going to take away the jobs. Imagine artificial intelligence and the U.S. is about uh, six years ahead of other countries when it comes to machine learning or artificial intelligence. One shot uh, earlier, HSBC, one shot they removed 30,000 employees. A reason? Automation. Automation also based on technology and machine learning based on technology. What is the net result of automation? Many people lose jobs. So there is a possibility this one. Hold the second option. What is the second option? The focus on technology is too much and will create tremendous job losses. That is a fact. But in this context, we have to check, see other options. Software is changing existing dynamics from industries to the way we interact. This is also true. In the past, manufacturing industries and today industries completely different. And the way we interact with industry is also completely different. Hold the third option. What is the fourth option? Industries and people have become so dependent on digital power that they are vulnerable to crimes. Uh, not uh, true. Please mark it wrong. Software poses a threat as huge amounts of personal data 
and information may be misused. This is a general statement, not relevant to the passage. That is also true. Now you have to decide between the second option and the third option. The second option, has it been mentioned anywhere in the passage? I don't think so. So what is the answer based on that? The third option is the answer. Software is changing existing dynamics that he mentions in the passage. Not same wording, but it has been touched. So answer is what? The third option. Which of the following is the reason for the reluctance to take up entrepreneurship? Underline the word reluctance. Reluctance means what? Unwilling. Reluctant means what? Unwilling. Reluctant to listen means what? Unwilling to listen. Right? <laughs> I'm just joking. Shall I read out the options? What is the first option? Vulnerability during economic downturn. Oh, it has been mentioned in the passage. In the second paragraph, it talks about this uh, economic downturn. Hold that one. What is the second option? Difficulty in acquiring mentors, not correct. Vast financial investments in infrastructure, not correct. Risks involved and sacrifices to be made. Hold this one. Lack of diverse workforce. Somebody talks about women and he mentions uh, two factors. One is what? Uh, risks involved and what is the other one sacrifices to be made now you have to decide between the first option and the fourth option but the question talks about what reluctance in the passage it talks about economic downturn or recession then he says because of that many youngsters they started uh, taking up uh, business ventures on their own it's quite contrary so what is the answer based on that the fourth option, what is the fourth option? A risks. See, here the question talks about why are some people reluctant to take up, uh, start business or entrepreneurship? What is the reason? It is not because of vulnerability during economic downturn. That may happen, may not happen. Usually what happens? A recession happens once in 15 years or 20 years. And there's no guarantee. It may happen, may not happen. But any business, Imagine you have a very good job. You get about 50,000 or 60,000. Will you leave that and start business which is full of uncertainty? Will you do that? So why are people reluctant to start their own businesses? Because of the risk factors and have to make a lot of sacrifices. Imagine you work for an organization. You can tell my timings 10 to 5. After 5, you can definitely say the office time is over. But your business, you invest crores or rupees, can you do that? You can't afford to do that. So answer is obviously, the fourth option is the answer. Please make a note. Which of the following is the author's main, uh, main objective in writing the passage? Shall I read out? To outline the difficulties in launching startups and dissuade, underline the word dissuade. Already have got this word many a time. Dissuade means what? Discourage someone from doing something. Please write the meaning. Dissuade means discourage someone from doing something. That is very important, second part. Discourage someone from doing something. Persuade means what? You convince someone to do something. But dissuade, you discourage someone from doing something. And it always takes a preposition from, dissuade from, taking up a job. So remember the combination, dissuade from. So is it right? Option A, is it right? No, not at all. Why will the writer dissuade uh, youngsters not, uh, not to take up businesses? That is ridiculous, not correct. To enumerate, underline the word enumerate. Enumerate means what? List out or highlight. Enumerate list out or highlight the environmental factors which should be fostered underline the word fostered fostered means what encouraged to help entrepreneurship flourish underline the word flourish in this context flourish means to do well to do well also write 
to progress, to progress. And write one combination, flourishing business. Please write, flourishing business. Flourishing business means what? They're doing extremely well. They're making a lot of money. Then we say flourishing business. Now, does he talk about environmental factors anywhere in the passage? Mark it wrong. What is the third option? To assess the explosive growth of startups and their significance for the future. Exactly. The passage is all about the explosive growth of, please underline the expression, explosive growth means what? Phenomenal growth. Please write, phenomenal growth. Explosive growth. Sometimes what happens, a lot of things, uh, they develop very fast, or a particular thing spreads out very fast. There are two expressions. Please write the expression first. Mushroom growth. What is it? Mushroom growth means a lot of things spread out. Then there's one word, please write the word. Plethora, plethora of colleges, plethora of institutes, means what? Too many of them. Mushroom growth of institutes, a lot of institutes. You can also say explosive growth of institutes, more or less the same. So what is the answer here? Only C. I think some problems with the key. So don't consider the key. Now question number seven. Similar meaning of the word evolved. Based on the context, what do you understand? He talks about what? What evolved? Starter production have become so evolved. So what do you understand? Developed or advanced? Which option says that? Nurtured, not correct. Inclined. Inclined has two meanings. One, it talks about the position, inclination, angle. Another meaning, right? The second meaning of the word inclined. One is tilted. Inclined means what? Tilted. Second meaning, inclined means interested. Inclined towards movies means what? Inclined towards acting means what? Interested in acting. Advanced, increased, produced. But what is the answer here? The third option, advanced, is the answer. Evolved means what? Advanced. Opposite in meaning. What is the word here? Ominously. Ominous means something negative or bad. And uh, what is opposite? Auspicious, positive. Inauspiciously, negative. But he wants opposite. Favorably. Hold that one. Understanding. Is it relevant here? No. Worryingly, no. Confidently, no. So what is the answer? Favorably. That's an easy one. Question number nine. What do the statistics regarding youth reveal? Underline the word reveal. Reveal means what? Disclose. Write one meaning, disclose. Re don't reveal the secret. Means what? Don't disclose the secret. Unemployment is rampant. Underline the word rampant. Usually it goes with corruption. Write the combination. In our country, corruption is rampant. A typical expression. Corruption is rampant. Rampant means what? Widespread. Widespread. And youth are increasingly disillusioned. That's also an important word. Disillusioned means what? Disappointed, disappointed, discouraged. Disillusioned with governments means what? Disappointed with governments. Disappointment is appropriate word. There is a change in the in mindset towards more unconventional employment opportunities. Does it sound right? Exactly. The passage talks about the youngsters taking up business ventures. So unconventional employment opportunities. Hold the second option. What is the third one? They're keen to attain the huge benefits of startups 
but reluctant to work towards them, not correct. They don't put stock in conventional formal education, but are drawn to setting up startups. This is also not correct, other than those given as options. So what is the answer here? Change in the mindset. In the past, youngsters, they would talk, think of a government job that to, in our country, in Telugu states, you touch any person in the past, they would say either engineering or medicine. But today, so many options are there. People talk about so many things. Yesterday, I was talking to a driver of a particular company, and he, he has two daughters and uh, one uh, son. The son is doing BCom, it seems. The one daughter is doing fashion designing. Another daughter is doing forensic science. See, see the diversity in the same family. But in the past, they would talk about only two things. What is your boy? Either engineer or doctor. What is your daughter? Either engineer or doctor. Today, things have changed. So answer is the second option. Question number 10, which of the following can be inferred in the context of the passage? I think all these can be inferred. So what is the fifth option here to save time? All the given statements can be inferred in the context of the passage. How many of you read this passage? Please raise your hands. It is not that easy to read within the stipulated time period and uh, answer the questions. It's a tough passage. In my opinion, this is a tough passage. And if you get five plus, you should be very happy. Getting five also, not that easy. Because each question, you need to go back, read, and get it confirmed. They haven't used the same words. Perhaps the idea is the same, but words have been changed. Higher level of comprehension. Shall we move on to the next? Uh, what do they deal with? This parajamal is very easy. We'll check. We'll come to know. We'll take the elimination approach. A, say yes or no. However, and no. They believe no. Most individuals fear, seems, hold that one. Apart from no. For example, no. So what is the first sentence here? Most individuals fear that their health cover of rupees 5 lakh or 10 lakh won't be enough to take care of a medical emergency. It talks about medical emergency and the amount 5 lakh or 10 lakh won't be enough. So first sentence is easy. What is the second one? They believe advances in medical science along with the rising cost of, the tr cost of treatment, medications and procedures may wipe out, underline the expression wipe out, their savings and investment if they contract some serious or critical illness. First, some sort of uh, uh, fear. Then based on what? One is the amount. Second, if they encounter or they experience something, a major problem, then the savings will not come to a rescue. So what is the second sentence here? C is the second sentence. Here he talks about what? Please underline the rising cost of treatment, medications, and procedures. And the next sentence you talk about the cost factor. Which sentence talks about the cost factor? And also the expression, for example. What is the expression here? He wants to substantiate, for example, an organ transplant, please underline, say of liver or lung, can cost 20 lakh to 40 lakh. So what is the number of this one? Third. And what is the clue for the next word? Are you guys listening? Huh. Transplant. Underline the word transplant. Where do you see the word? I know, I got it, I got it. Apart from such exorbitant transplant, so please underline the word exorbitant. Exorbitant means unreasonably priced. Unreasonably priced. That's an important word. Also underline the word such exorbitant transplant. Previous sentence talks about organ transplant. So he says such exorbitant. What is exorbitant here? Transplant of liver or lung, how many lakhs? 
20 or 40, that is huge amount, huge. Imagine 20 lakh or 40 lakh. From where an employee can get, only business people with black money can afford something like that. Not a typical employee. And companies also, they don't spend so much on employees. They may give 5 lakh or 10 lakh. There's a limit for that also. So here, next one is rather easy. So what is this number? The fourth one. Apart from such exorbitant. So imagine something is a, a little coffee or tea, 20 rupees, we say costly. And 200 rupees, expensive. 500 rupees, exorbitant. The scale is there, OK? Now what is the fifth sentence? How many sentences are here? Six or seven? Six. So what is the fifth one? All these are beliefs. So, and these beliefs are not misrepresented. Oh, I think we have skipped this one. Oh. You guys are, whatever I say, you listen. Uh, you don't try to stop me. No one has tried to stop me. You, you try to stop. Fine, what? Now we'll start again. What is the first sentence? D is the first sentence. Most individuals fear that. What is the second sentence? C is the second sentence. No problem. Then comes, what is the third sentence? B is the third sentence. Yes or right or wrong? Huh. And these beliefs are not misrepresented. Then he gives, for example, what is the next one? Fourth one is, please go there. This is the fourth one. And what is the fifth one? E is the fifth one. And what is the last one? You are le left with only one sentence, obviously. However, it talks about the positive change. Signs of change are visible as few insurance companies have started offering some relief from these expenses. How many of you have got this one right? I see a lot. Oh, you have got it right for the first time, I suppose. Very good. I appreciate. So it's a good beginning. Now, shall I move on to the next set of questions? What do they deal with? Errors. The two brothers were caught. Which tense is that? Past tense, active voice or passive voice? Someone caught the two brothers. The two brothers were caught by someone. By someone we don't mention. The two brothers were caught when, while trying to steal gift packets from where? From a marriage hall. So do you find any error? So what is the answer based on that? Fifth option, no error. You have a problem? No. <laughs> Professionals with knowledge of child rights alone should be appointed on child protection units. Where is the error? Fourth part. On or in? Preposition related. Appointed in child protection units, not on. You have corrected already. If you don't get enough sleep, apart of health problems, you also run the risk of making bad financial decisions. So prospective bankers, you have to remember this. Important for you guys. So where is the error? What is it? Apart takes the preposition from, apart from. Preposition combination. While the students of the school are gearing up, means getting ready, please underline the phrasal verb, gear up, to get ready. Gearing up to learn a new language, those already learning the language are a perturbed lot. Here, underline the word lot. What, which part of speech is it? Have you said something? I haven't heard anything. When I ask a question, I expect you have to say something. So which part of speech is it? No. Please write noun. What is it? Lot. It's a lot. And what is the word before that? Which part of speech should it be? Adjective. Now perturb, which part of speech is it as such? It's a verb. It's a regular verb. Perturb means what? Disturb. I write the meaning, disturb. Perturb, perturbed, perturbed. So we can use a past participle as an adjective. So what is 
wrong with this expression? Is it perturbed lot or perturbed lot? Please add ED. Perturbed lot. Disturbed lot. Always try to use similar patterns. There you write disturbed lot. That is easy, easy to understand. Disturbed lot. Excited lot. Interested lot. Same patterns. So it is related to what? Adjective. Infuse a sense of. Please underline the word infuse. Infuse means what? To inject. To inject. To send in. Infusions. You know the word infusion. Infuse a sense of joy and enthusiasm into your daily work to make it more interesting. When do you use the word more? This session is more interesting than that session. So what is this comparison? Are they comparing here? Then do you have to use the word more? Why again? Huh? So please strike off the word more. Infuse a sense of joy and enthusiasm into your daily work to make it interesting. That's enough. So it is related to what? Redundancy. Not required. Redundancy. Has anyone got all the five correct? Oh, that's very good. I appreciate. I'm too exhausted, so I don't have energy to say, please give him a big hand. If you do it, I'll be happy. <laughs> Thank you. Who is it? Uday Baskar? Huh? Good, keep it up. Now we'll move on to the next set of questions. What do they deal with? I expect something. What do they deal with? <laughs> See, I have come from KPHB. Very hot and exhausted. And yesterday's uh, the Hindu editorial, I had to, I slept at 1.30 last night, got up at 5.30 again, had to work. And it took almost seven hours. Three different, uh, four sheets I had to work on. Different software, one Microsoft, one Word, one Quark. Each sheet, a different software. And I'm half asleep right now. Half asleep means what? Not completely alert. So short of sleep, that's why here and there I fumble. If you don't have sleep, what will happen? Your speech won't be clear. You fumble. You know the word fumble. And uh, I want to get some energy from you. When I ask a question, you respond. Then I get energy. I ask a question, no response. What, what should I think? As such, I'm exhausted. And you don't respond, not a good thing. So what do, the, what do these questions deal with? Double fillers. Double fillers means what? Double trouble. <laughs> Double trouble. So we'll see the first question number 21. Green and black tea are obtained from the same plant. There are quite a few significant differences. Underline the word significant. Important. So it talks about what a contrasting situation. They take from the same plant, but differences are there. So contrast. We'll check the options. Although, although green and black tea seems right. First word is right. What is the second word here? Attaching. Is it right? Mark it wrong. Ah, you guys are with me right now. <laughs> That's very good. Keep it up till the end of the session. No. Since green and black tea, does it talk about contrast? No, mark it wrong. You don't have to go for the second word. However, can you start in this context with the word however? Mark it wrong. Though, yes. seems right. Though green and black tea are obtained from the same plant, there are quite a few significant differences between them. So between goes with... Uh, but yesterday one girl stopped me and sh she was asking about a particular article from the Economist magazine, the sentence goes like this, between three political parties. She asked, sir, how come between? Between goes with what? Two persons or two things. Incidentally, KPHP branch, one girl asked the same thing. She was not aware of what happened here yesterday. She asked, sir, can we use between for, I was talking about prepositions in some context. Sir, I have seen between for three things. Then I said, give me some time. I myself don't know, frankly speaking. That is higher level. Lower level, you take any grammar book across the world, the standard explanation when it comes to the difference between between and among. Between two persons are two things, among more than two. But Economist magazine article, between the three parties, that is rather confusing. So perhaps I'll be able to tell on Monday. 
Why between, why not among? That's a very good doubt. So shall I continue? So here you responded uh, two things, uh, what is it? Between. But remember, between goes with three things also. That is the point here. But in which context we can use the word between? You will come to know on Monday, not today. So what is the answer here? Because is not correct, the fourth option is the answer. Sports leagues have sports like Kabaddi, football and tennis, a leg up. Please underline the expression leg up. It means something like uh, encouraging, encourage, support. Sports leagues have, underline the helping verb have. And here the sentence should be in which tense? Present perfect. Any perfect tense, the verb should be in which form? Past participle. So how many verbs are there? Almost all in past participle, so you cannot decide. Now we'll take the second word. Have sent sports like, can you send sports? Mark it wrong, based on the first word. Thrown sports, no, mark it wrong. Given sports like kabaddi, football and tennis, a leg up. Given, seems right, hold that one. And uh, what is the second word? But that may not be enough to transform Indian sport. This word also seems right, hold this one. Set sports like, set is not correct, mark it wrong. Shown sports like, you cannot use the word shown. Adequate is right, much is not correct. May not be much to, but may not be adequate to transform. So what is the answer here? Third option is the answer, given, may not be enough, have given. This is rather easy. Parents need to encourage their children to look, look, oh, already have got beyond, which option is that? The first option, look beyond the traditional field so that a passion can be developed into a career. Underline the word passion. I think you got it yesterday or day before yesterday. Passion means what? A lot of interest, lot of interest or enthusiasm. Passionate about the banking career. You're all passionate about the banking career. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, no, I no response. <laughs> this also you don't respond. That is really strange. That you're, you guys are really passionate about the banking sector. No second thoughts. Otherwise, peak summer, imagine you are here. And peak winter, you are here. Peak rainy season, you are here. Irrespective of the time, morning, you are here. Afternoon, you are here. Night, if Sudhi sir says we are going to have night college, CCC, CCE, Knight College. I'm sure a lot of students will enroll. Knight College also. When, can, when is it possible? If you're not passionate, you cannot sit. I was talking to one of the faculty members, our current professor, Veera Samiswa, sir. I told him, for us, it is only for an hour. I am there 2 to 3.30, and someone else 3.30 to 4.30. Imagine the plight of the students. They have to be there from 2 to 5.30, that is really highly appreciable and admirable. That is possible only if you're passionate. Otherwise, after 10 minutes, you will start jumping from here. Slowly sneak out. You know the word sneak out? Sneak out means what? Mm. So, passion can be developed. The first option seems right, hold that one. To look outside, not correct. Mark it wrong. To look Along, this is also not correct. To look besides, no. Within, no. But quite obvious, what is the answer here? Beyond, and passion can be developed into a career. It's always better if you develop your passion, you work. The other day, I, I think yesterday we got, uh, I brought a G.B. Shaw's uh, quote. Do you remember? He also said one more thing. Lucky is the person, I repeat, lucky is the person who can make his hobby his profession. See the wording. Lucky is the person who can make his hobby his profession. He's the happiest person. His hobby becomes his profession. What else can you expect? You are the happiest person. Your passion becomes your career. What else do you want? You are the happiest person. So we'll move on to the next one. What is the number? 24. Time and again, this is a bit difficult, Time and again, worried enlist have, underline the helping verb have, 
have thought of trouble, thought of trouble, perhaps we don't know the context, as debt laden, means full of debt, and uh, spendthrift consumers, please underline the word spendthrift. Write two words, first you write the word lavish, then you write the word extravagant. All the three are negative words, lavish, extravagant, spendthrift, means what? Spending money without thinking. And what are the opposite positive words? Please write thrifty. Thrifty means positive, you think and spend. And better word, frugal. Frugal also means you think and spend. It is worth you spend, otherwise you don't spend. These are negative words, these are positive words, all related to spending. And there are some people, they don't, they have a lot of money, but they don't spend at all. So, <laughs> crazy people. So, what is the word, old English, we would say, what? Miser. But now, what do we say? Stingy, stingy person. So, time and again, worried analysts have wondered of trouble. But here you cannot, thought is okay, alarmed is okay, wondered is also okay. Cautioning is not correct. What is the reason? Is it grammatically correct? Have cautioning. Reject that one. Warned is also correct. You have to decide based on the second word. And spendthrift, once you understand spendthrift consumers, then you can decide the word for the second blank. Spendthrift consumers means what? They spend a lot of money without thinking. And here, you should also know the meaning of this particular word, to rein in their spending. Underline the word rein means control, R-E-I-N. Rein means what? Control. Usually it goes with horses, controlling horses. So it is uh, based on that you have to decide. Eager, eager to rein? No. Next, uh, force, armed. What is the last one? Unwilling. Spendthrift consumers are unwilling to rein in their spending. They are unwilling to uh, control their spending. This seems perfect. So, time and again, worried analysts have warned. That is also right. What is the answer based on that? The fifth option is the answer. A little difficult because of two words. One is spendthrift, the other is rein. 25, in an, underline the indefinite article, an. How many options with uh, a vowel letter? Almost all. <laughs> then you cannot consider. It is of no use. To save farmers from vagaries, please underline that word, an important word. It goes with written English. Write the meaning, uncertainties. Vagaries means what? Uncertainties. Uncertainties. You got one word, uncertain, irregular. What is the word? It starts with the letter E. Erratic, write the word erratic. The other day you got it with erratic rainfall, erratic monsoon, vagaries of monsoon. The government will soon villages with the nearest sources of water in an event to save. Is that right? No. In an effort or efforts. So efforts cannot be used. You have to use a singular form. In an endeavor means attempt. Please write, a sincere attempt, a serious attempt. Assign villages with the nearest. Assign villages to, it doesn't take, go with, with. The second word is not correct. Attack, can you use the word attack here? In an attempt to save farmers from vagaries of monsoon, the government will soon connect villages with, connect with, perfect. So what is the answer here? Fifth option is the answer. Has anyone got all the five correct? Oh, a lot of students. That's very good. I appreciate it. Now, this is a little complicated, para this uh, passage or paragraph, close related. Shall I read out? Yes? According to a report in 1991, there were about 5.4 billion people in the world. Of that 50%, China and uh, India together, 50%. Am I right? 
what is Chinese population? 1.4 or 5 or 1.2? You guys should have at your fingertips. This is GK bit. What is Indian population? 1.2. Chinese population? More than Indians, Indian population. So together about uh, 2.5, let us take. And here what is the world population? 5.4. So more or less uh, 50%. From 1990 to 1991, the population increased by 95 million. And now has continued to grow at that rate. 94 million means what? 1 million, 10 lakhs. Imagine. It is like growing, growing, growing. And this may appear to be no danger. At the outset, it, may, it doesn't look like a major threat. This may appear to be no danger. But if one were to think of it as a pond doubling its amount of lily pads for 40 days, they would see it accusingly. Underline the word accusingly. First you write the word accuse. Accuse means what? To point out. To point out. Usually it goes with uh, something negative, something wrong. Accused of, write the combination. Accused of crime. Accused of murder. Accused of theft. All these expressions we use. Does it go with this context? Population? No. They would see it differently. He has taken one analogy, so they would see it differently. Hold that one. Faithfully. Does it go with this context? No. They would see it fact, no. Cleared, not correct. So what is the answer here? So if they compare, if, if one were to think of it as a pond doubling its amount of lily pads for 40 days, they would see it differently. Interesting statistics. Then he talks about that. It will start out with one lily pad the next day. It will have two, the, it will have two and on the 39th day it will be half filled. However, on the 40th day, it will be completely filled because it's always doubling. The Earth's population is doubling every 40 years. Same thing, it doubling every 40 years. Please excuse me. Thank you, Basha. Mm. Mm. Okay, right. Thank you. So we don't want, shall I continue? We don't want to wait until the 79th year to our problem, to answer our problem, to support our problem, to elevate, underline the word elevate, and write uh, the meaning. One of the meanings, project, elevate, project. Another meaning, highlight. Elevate means what? Highlight. Fix our problem, pick our problem. We don't want to wait until the 79th year to elevate our problem. I don't think it is the answer. What is the fourth option? Fix our problem. We don't want to wait until the 79th year to fix our problem. We should not wait so long. Your fix means what? Please, first you make a note. Answer is what? The fourth option. And fix has got many meanings. First you write uh, fix, attach. What is the typical meaning? Attach. You all know a quick fix. It goes with what? Joining. But another meaning, fix. To repair. To repair. I write one expression. Fix the fan. Or fix the, uh, fix the TV. Means what? Repair the TV. We also use the word, write one more word, mend. M-E-N-D. Mend means what? Fix. Mend, M-E-N-D, mend. And here, fix our problem means what? Sort out our problem. Please write the meaning. Fix means what? Find a solution. Sort out. Sort out means what? Find a solution. An expert on the subject believes the impact on the environment is equal to the population multiplied by the affluence. Underline that word. I think you got this the other day. Means what? Abundance of wealth. I think yesterday you got two words. One begins with A, the other begins with E. E means what? Effluent. Liquid waste from factories or sewage. And A means what? Wealth, rich. 
Affluent societies means what? Rich societies, wealthy people, which means the amount of energy and food supply the population assembles, makes, consumes, follows, gives. Obviously, what is the answer? Consumes. But the sentence is not very clear. The option is that one. What is option? Consumes. Therefore, with a larger population, there is a greater impact on the earth's water, air and land. Obviously, a common problem that people think is associated with overpopulation is out of space. This is an important one. Uh, going out of space, be out of space, uh, running out of space. That's a phrasal verb. Please write, uh, today I have brought, you have in the worksheet, but still you can write, uh, run out of, to use something completely, to use something completely. Run out of, uh, write one example, employees, employees, usually, Employees usually run out of money. Employees usually run out of money in the last week of the month. In the last week of the month. Last week, employees, what do they do? They have to borrow here and there. Typical middle class. You all must be knowing that. Mm. And sometimes we say, I ran out of money. I ran out of money means what? No money. For that, we can also say, I'm broke. I'm broke means what? No money. And we use this with a run out of money, a run out of ideas. Time also, very good. Run out of time. We usually run out of time here. Okay. Now, what is the answer based on that? Running out of space, not out of traveling is not correct. Answer is the third option. That is the 29th one, am I right? More people use more cars, need more firewood, drink more water. This causes more air pollution, more land utilization, and more water table, availability, sources, reception, depletion. This causes more air pollution, more land utilization, and more water depletion or so sources. Depletion, not sources. What is the word here? Please underline. Causes, not sources. Causes what? Water depletion. The key says the fourth, third option, I suppose. Am I right? No, no way. See, more people use more cars, need more firewood, drink more water. This causes negative impact, more air pollution, positive or negative. More land utilization, positive or negative, and uh, more water depletion, negative. That's it. Any questions from your side?